Hello, chess family. It's me, Nash the Master, Jesse James, and it's time for another installment for Accelerated Dragon. Now, in this variation, we're going to be learning about the D3 variations. Basically, you're playing against someone who doesn't really know the line too well, so they just play standard moves like Bishop C4. With that being said, well, Black's going to go ahead and get a good advantage in this variation because, well, we know what we're doing, right? And so with that being said, we're actually going to see a game where I got to play against one of our local players here, uh, James Bogar. Jim Bogar, but if you're a friend of him, you, you call him James. And so this is a game we played at one of our weekly Wednesday night games. This was a 90-minute game, and, well, let's see how it goes. Here James started off with e4, c5, of course, knight f3, g6, bishop c4 here. And already, like I said, this is for those who don't really know the line too well. Of course, the main line will be going with d4, c takes, knight takes, and there's other variations you can try here with pawn c4 or even bishop c4. The Marazzi bond or bishop c4 are one of the main ways to play against this accelerated dragon and get good positions. That being said, again, he didn't know this too well, so he, played, he went ahead and played bishop c4. All right, bishop g7. One of the key things of whenever they do play this bishop c4 is to grab this d4 as soon as possible. That's why you're going to see me playing bishop g7 and also the knight to c6. So just because they didn't play it right now doesn't mean they can't play it later. So we want to discourage this as much as possible. So castles happens right now and knight c6 and now d4 cannot get played anytime soon. All right, he went ahead and played a3 here. Not a move that I like too much. In fact, I'm not too sure why he played this move. Actually, in this game, he plays a3 and h3. And I would discourage a lot of players to do this without a good reason. All right. I went ahead and played knight f6, of course. And he went pawn to d3. Now, I do have a question for somebody. Let's see. What happens if they play pawn to e5 here? This is something that a lot of people will ask me. So my question goes to you. If e5 gets played, what do you play here as black? Alright, well hopefully you push pause, hopefully you try to calculate what happens if e5. Actually, black is better in all these lines. After the simple move of knight to g4 here, you see that the e5 pawn will be lost. Well, white does have an interesting tactic here, and you don't get full points if you didn't see this, but white actually has bishop takes on f7 check. Alright, king takes on f7, knight g5 check, king g8, and queen takes g4. Who stands better here? Well, black actually. Here, although it seems like black's king is is uh, running around and he is not able to castle well the king is actually quite safe and we're about to win our pawn back knight takes on e5 so well black has an easy advantage here as he has both center pawns and we also have the bishop pair and also don't worry about this king he's going to be finding uh safety very soon for instance after something like queen to g3 here we just play pawn h6 the knight moves away let's say it goes to e4 and we'll play pawn d6 here or we could play um, uh, another another move here to defend the pawn, but basically the king's just going to run to h7, and yeah, I'm already liking black's position here. Again, the potential in this position is just much more for black than it is for white. All right, back to the game. So after this move of let's see, here, knight c6, a3, knight f6, d3, we just go ahead and castle here. All right. And here, another mistake by my opponent. He goes ahead and plays knight b to d2. And these aren't really mistakes as much as inaccuracies. Although they're not losing any time soon, these little inaccuracies he makes helps me build up a strong advantage. And what was wrong with this knight b to d2? Well, whenever you're playing in these variations, well, you want to play the knight to c3 to cover the d5 square. Remember, guys, if you're playing the Accelerated Dragon, what do you play here to get an equal, if not better, move? Hopefully you found it. Here we go ahead and play the nice move of... Pawn to d5. Here we take the center by storm. And, well, white has nothing better than just to go ahead and take. Knight takes d5. Now we've opened up our bishop. And, yep, all our pieces are very active now. And we just control the center here. You can see that white, although they move first, has less space than black does. All because of this little knight c3 move. This would have prevented d5 from happening so soon. All right, the game continued. Pawn h3 got played. Now here I won't give him too much guff. As, well, h3 actually does a practical idea, which is stopping the bishop to g4 move. And this is actually a good square for the bishop because it would like to trade off and help get control of this d4 square. Again, this is why I have a, a big advantage. I control more space in the center. Typically, from 4 and back, this is white's territory. And 5 and back, this is black's territory. You can see that I've already, I've already conquered my own territory. And now I'm starting to push forward into his. Well, what do you play now? We should be looking at moving the next piece, which is the bishop. So where's a good place to place the bishop? Well, here, after thinking for quite a while, I realized the bishop was not going to be good on either one of these squares. And so I went ahead and played pawn b6 to put the bishop to the long diagonal. Here we have a very nice pawn structure, and the bishop will be placed on this diagonal, aiming toward this king. All right, here we go. Rook 
oh, I'm sorry, knight to e4 got played. Pawn to h6, x clam. I get myself x clam here because of the planning here. So I'm going to go ahead and ask you, what do you think we should do in this position? And what was my plan with pawn to h6? Hint, should we be going for a center attack, queen side attack, or king side attack? All right, hopefully you figured out which way I'm going to be going. Hopefully the hint was me playing pawn to h6 here. But with that being said, now that we know we're going to go for a king side attack, how do we do that? And why did h6 get played? h6 seems like a very slow move to do king side attack. Well, the idea here is to play f5 and e5. And notice if we had played f5 right away here, well, there's a little bit of annoying things here with like, let's just say I went f5 right away. Knight g5 can get played here or even knight to c3 here. And yeah, this is a very annoying because of the pin right here. In fact, I'm not even threatening to take yet because if I do take uh, bishop, uh, yeah, we'll just say knight g5 gets played. If pawn takes, pawn just takes back. Well, white's just winning because of the pin. So h6 is going to stop a lot of these ideas and help push forward. So h6 gets played. White played rook to b1. Here, James is still struggling in the opening because, well, he can't even move the bishop out, the dark square bishop, which he'd like to move next, because the bishop is attacking the pawn on b2. Okay. Well, what do I do now? Well, before I start my advance on the king side for the attack, I do want to take a second here and develop the rest of my pieces. Just like the Russians like to say, develop, then attack, I like to follow this principle myself. So, bishop b7 got play, uh, played, play, placing the bishop on the long diagonal. Bishop a2, a very interesting move here, which actually is a bad plan. Remember, if your opponent ever has a bad plan, let them do it, right? There's no need to stop their plans if it's not going to be too good. So, what do you do now? I went ahead and played one more preparatory move. King h7, now I don't have to worry about any kind of diagonal threats with this bishop. I don't have to worry about any kind of pins over here. And well, my opponent goes ahead and plays pawn to h4. An interesting move here. I guess trying to grab some space on the king side, but this doesn't seem to help out too much. All right, black to move. Let's start pushing forward. Let's create, an, let's create a strong attacking plan. What do you play here? Remember, I do encourage you to push pause. Here we went ahead and played pawn to f5 here, attacking the knight. Here comes the king side attack or controlling of the center. f5 gets played. Knight back to g3 and pawn to e5. Here again, the center has been conquered. And well, you get to make your decision. One of the reasons why we control the center is so that we can either pivot for the king side or the queen side. And here you can really choose any way you want to go because you control the center. So you're really determining the strategy of the game. Here we played pawn h5. Do we take? Of course not. Pawn g5 gets played. You can see this nice armada of pawns here that I have and I'm pushing forward here to attack my opponent's king. He went ahead and played pawn c4. And yes, this is definitely a double question mark move because, well, well, this also creates a weakness for him. Do you know what the weakness is? Remember, always try to look at your opponent's position and ask yourself, where is a weakness that I can attack? And here, the weakness that was just created was the d3 pawn. It's a backwards pawn open file. The other bad thing about this move is, well, this goes with the quote, all lines of play which lead to the imprisonment of the bishop are principled to be condemned. And this is true for this bishop, as this bishop will not be seen in the light of day anytime soon. In fact, I think for the rest of this, the game, this bishop does not help out. And yeah, this bishop just blocked in by its own pawn. I don't think they were. I don't think they uh, knew they were on the same team. That's probably what happened here. All right, let's go ahead and move this knight. Where's a good square for the knight to move to? To be honest, there's like four or five different plans you can do with the knight. Well, we can do knight c7 here. Now this is a slow strategic plan, but not but a good one nonetheless. Here the knight will go to e6 and then jump to d4. And with the double knights there, it's going to be a very good place for it. What else can we do? We could play knight to e7 here. The idea of knight e7 is that we're going to play queen d7, double up with the uh, with the queen, and then put pressure on the backwards pawn. Anytime there's a backwards pawn or a static weakness, you can just keep building up against it. They can't really get out of it. All right. What else can we move the knight to? Well, here we can also play something like, well, knight to f6. This idea is just trying to put pressure on the pawn on h5. Oh, be careful, though. Looks like knight takes f5. It loses the pawn right away. With that being said, I went ahead and played probably the most aggressive way to play because you know you know how I like to do it. Here I went ahead and played knight to f4. Now the reason why this is the most aggressive is not because it puts pressure on the d3 pawn so much. It's because I already had anticipated how my opponent was going to play. Here, well, there really is only one good way to play. Uh, you have to take this knight. They say a knight on f4 is worth a pawn. At least that's what Kasparov said, one of the best attacking players ever. And well, yeah, if you don't take this, I'm going to be definitely doing some really strong attacking ideas. So he took... And here's my question to you. Do we, do we take with the G pawn or the E pawn? With that being said, no points awarded unless you have a plan of why we're taking back that way. 
And this was the most aggressive way to play, so of course I chose this line. And here I found a nice way to start a kingside attack. All right, hopefully you found my idea. Here, believe it or not, I took with the e-pawn. Now, both ways taking are going to be good. This way was just the way that I had planned, and, well, I think it was the best way. Here, computer actually does like g takes f4 a little bit better. It's negative 7 this position, negative 6.6 .6 if you do my plan. And this way makes a lot more sense, too, because, well, it's going to hold the center down, so it means d4 won't be played anytime soon. And d4 is one of the few ways for white to try and get some kind of balance in this game. But the reason why g takes it looks so good is because, well, we're going to play something like rook g8 and slide the queen over here and run down the g file. Notice my king is not really in any trouble at all in this game. All right. Well, if I played e takes f4, how could this be more aggressive? Well, my line is almost the same, except I'm going to force open lines. Remember, when you're attacking your opponent's king, you need open files and diagonals. And that's exactly what I do. After knight to e2 got played, g4, attacking the knight. The knight jumped to h2. And this was the whole idea behind this. Pawn to f3. And, uh, well, this is one of those uh, requests that you uh, pe people just have to uh, accept, right? This is one of those uh, terms where, you know, you, you can't say no to this. And, uh, yep, here his king's side gets opened up. There's no better move than just to go ahead and take. Pawn takes on f3. Knight takes on f3. Why did I do this? Well, now you can see the g files opened up. And, again, my king is nice and safe over here while well, their king's wide open. And here, unfortunately, I did not follow up the best way. Let's see. Can you find the move that I missed here to get a winning attack right away? This is negative 14. Uh, so very, very strong position. But I make a mistake here. Although it's still a good move. Um, it's just not the best, and the game lasts on a little bit longer. All right, hope you find the idea. Here we want to come down the G file. So we want to play the idea of queen to G5 check, meaning we need to get rid of this knight here on F3. And so if you understand that, well, then you understand what we should play here, which is here we, I should have played knight to E5 here, a simple move, but I need to take on F3, and if the knight takes, well, the game just ends very quickly with, you know, queen G5 check over here. Oof. Uh, with that being said, I missed this move, and I played knight to d4 right away. And the idea was still the same to try and take on f3, but of course, Jim finds the best way to play. He played knight takes d4, and then I played bishop takes d4. Again, the knight cannot take because of queen g5 check mate in a few moves here. So still a good position, just not the best. And well, this rook is coming to g5 too, so his king tried to jump out the way. King 2h2, queen c7 check. King h3, yeah, if, uh, you, you can imagine putting your king inside the pin is not going to be best. In fact, after king h1, the game ends very fast after queen f4. And there really is just no good answer to this bishop takes f3 check. And the king is going to be trapped, especially whenever the rook gets to the g file here too. So, king h3 got played. And, well, black to move, simple chess. Let's just play rook g8. Now there's so many ideas for checkmate and attacks down this file. All right, what do we do now? Well... White to play. White went ahead and played knight to h4. This makes sense here, although this does lead to a forced checkmate move or a checkmate sequence. It's black to move and win. Let's see if we can find the final combination here. All right, hopefully you push pause. Hopefully you tried to find the right move. What do we play here? Well, the checkmate square is on g3 here. So here we actually play bishop takes on f2 here, and it's game over. There is just really no good way to cover this square. In fact, right now the computer is already giving something like queen f3. As we all know, this is just bad due to bishop takes on f3. And I don't know, is there any other way we could try to play this? Uh, rook g1. Here we have the nice checkmate sequence. Rook g3 check. Of course, if we take, it's mate in 1. So we're going to go ahead and play king h2. But now checkmate in 2. Rook takes g1 check. King h1 and queen g3 check and mate. Well, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. This was how to play against the D3 variations. Remember, try to control that D4 square as soon as possible. And, well, good luck in your games. We'll see you in the next video.